What we are experiencing at this moment in time, the turning point in man's reach for space, going from governments to private companies like yours? I think we're at the dawn of a new era, and, and it's, it's, I think it's going to be very exciting. What we're hoping to do with SpaceX is to push the envelope and provide uh, a reason for people to be excited and inspired to be human. Ladies and gentlemen, Musk. Mr. Elon Musk! Despite a chorus of skeptics, Musk built a car company called Tesla that turns out 5,000 high-end all-electric cars a year. Another Musk company sells solar power systems. But his lifelong passion is space. And when eBay bought PayPal in 2002, Musk started looking for ways to launch his new fortune into orbit. I went to uh, Russia to look at buying um, a refurbished ICBM, which is a very trippy experience. Uh, it was very bizarre. Um, and when I tell people that, they are like, what? <laughs> His plan was bizarre. Put a greenhouse on the rocket, land it on Mars, and beam back the pictures. It would get people really excited, and that would recharge human space exploration. You that, just, that was my original idea. You just wanted to get people interested in space again? Yes. Yeah. Capture the imagination? Yes. That, would, that was the idea. Turns out the Dnieper was so expensive his idea never flew. So Musk decided that the only way to get an affordable rocket was to build it himself. And he started SpaceX. The odds of me coming into the rocket business, not knowing anything about rockets, not having ever built anything, I mean, um, I would have to be insane if I thought the odds were in my favor. Why even begin? Uh, when something is important enough, you do it even if the odds are not in your favor. How much of your personal fortune have you poured into this? A uh, hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars yeah. into something that you did not believe would work at the beginning. Yes. I think it's important that humanity become a multi-planet species. I think most people would agree that a future where we are a space-faring civilization um, is inspiring and exciting um, compared with one where we are forever confined to Earth until some eventual extinction event. You know, that, that's really why I started SpaceX. SpaceX is housed in a sprawling factory near Los Angeles where fuselages for Boeing 747s used to be built. How did you get the expertise to be the chief technology officer of a rocket ship company? Um, well, uh, I do have a physics background. That's helpful as a foundation. Um, and then I read a lot of books and talked to a lot of, a lot of smart people. You're self-taught? Yeah. Well, well uh, self-taught, yes, meaning um, I, didn't, I don't have an aerospace degree. So how, how did you go about acquiring the knowledge? Well, uh, I, like I said, I read a lot of books, talked to a lot of people, and, and have a great team. Two. One. Four years after starting, SpaceX rolled out its first rocket, an unmanned booster called the Falcon 1. Falcon has cleared the tower. But the first three test flights failed to reach orbit. Uh, we are hearing from the launch control center that there has been an anomaly on the vehicle. When you had that third failure in a row, mm -hmm. did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Eight weeks later, Musk bet the company on another flight. We have liftoff. And this time around, everything worked. Perfect. If that fourth launch hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount a fifth. You couldn't have gone on at that point. We, we, it, yes, death would have been, I think, inevitable because we did not have the resources to, to mount a fifth launch. This is a tricky business. Tricky. <laughs> yeah, the, with, yeah, I wish it wasn't so hard. Um. <laughs> you know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that. Uh, because those guys are, yeah, you know, th those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. 
did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is to, is to make a, a significant difference in, in space flight and, and, and help make space flight accessible to, to almost anyone. And I, I, I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we, as we can. And then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. And then that, that, that all those things improve the odds of success. If other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if you're doing the same thing, you know that in, in one year you will achieve what they achieve. You, you, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve.